Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books. Today we are talking about how non-woke movies are topping the box office. Even though these movies have come out months ago, and actually, Spider-Man came out in 2021. So it's it's not a new movie. Uh, but those two are actually doing better than everything else that's out there. All the other Marvel, you, you can't even compare it to a Star Wars movie because... They don't have any Star Wars movies out right now. So this is coming from Breitbart. Let's get into the article. Before we do, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. And it's a huge help for me uh, when you uh, do a thumbs up. Really appreciate you. This is coming from Breitbart. Months old non-woke Spider-Man and Top Gun, top Labor Day weekend box office. We were talking about this a week ago, and it's actually come to pass. How hungry are Americans for non-woke movies? So hungry that the non-woke Spider-Man No Way Home and non-woke Top Gun Maverick are this weekend's kings at the box office. How unprecedented is this Labor Day weekend's triumph of the non-woke? Well, No Way Home was released nearly eight months ago and has been available on home video since April 12th. On home video since April 12th. You do not need to go see this movie in the theaters. You can just watch it on home video but it's been out for five months. Top Gun Maverick was released nearly four months ago and has been available on home video for weeks. Nevertheless, No Way Home sits at the top spot with a four-day gross of $6.1 million, which brings its total domestic haul to $811 million. Worth thinking about. Coming in second place is Top Gun Maverick with a four-day haul of $6 million, which brings its total domestic haul to $700 million pretty close. And the non-woke Spider-Man No Way Home is the third highest domestic grocer of all time. Top Gun Maverick sits at number six. By next week, it'll pass Black Panther and perch at number five. But how is this possible when Thor Love and Thunder, with a $340 million gross, is a woke tart fest with homosexuality and nonstop ridicule, the very thing Top Gun Maverick celebrates, which is masculine competence. How is it possible when Lightyear, with a $118 million gross, not good for a Disney Pixar film, served up the same sex kiss that no one asked for in a kid's movie, much less a Toy Story movie? But how is it possible when Secrets of Dumbledore, at a $96 million gross, went the full gay? After all, we're talking about a freaking Harry Potter movie. Even Michael Bay went woke with Ambulance, which grossed only $22 million. And how about Eternals, with the heavy-duty man-on-man action grossing just $164 million? Did better than Lightyear, I guess. That's not good. That's a Marvel movie. They're supposed to be doing bigger numbers than that. The liars in the entertainment media will tell you this is no big deal, and it doesn't represent anything. After all, there are no new titles released in theaters. You see, the box office is going through a drought. So naturally, Top Gun and Spider-Man jump back into the top spot. Except, more than 40 new movies have been theatrically released since July 29th. The problem is not that there's a drought of new movies. The problem is a drought of new movies people actually want to see. Normal people that want to see normal movies. You might be asking, where are the tried and true blockbusters? The awesome franchise movies we used to count on every month. Well, they've all been killed off. They killed off Star Wars, and they're in the process of killing Marvel. They killed Terminator, Men in Black, Charlie's Angels. Charlie's Angels I did a video about a couple of years ago. That movie was so... The director told the actresses, just wear whatever you want from home, whatever you feel comfortable in. They didn't even have wardrobe. That's insane. That... I just, that is something I'll never get over. But also, Suicide Squad, they ruined. Harley Quinn, Space Jam, Black Widow, Eternals, Toy Toy Story, Independence Day, Kingsman, Shaft, X-Men. But hey, good luck with the new Black Panther. It's supposed to have a lot of great female characters uh, probably talking down about men. Hard to believe, but yes, non-woke movies still make a lot of money. Um, You know, interestingly... Today, uh, this came out in That Park Place, great website talking about uh, Disney and uh, Marvel-related uh, industry stuff. And they have a toy industry expert that um, gives them information on some cool inside stuff. 
And this is what the insider, I thought this was really interesting. This is what the insider was telling them about, and this is all new, I haven't covered this before. Um, a toy insider with major connections is reaching out to that bar place again with impressive details. According to this individual, whom they verified as being an expert within the industry, the toy market in North America is beginning to split into politically based markets. So they see what's happening with the movies. They see what's actually making money. And the toy companies, they've been taking losses and they're willing to take some losses. But when they know it's just deliberate ideology stuff, they're not gonna keep doing it. So there's been a rise of conservative entertainment such as these two films. And that fits in with what's actually selling in the toy industry. So here's some criteria that various studios and merchandising partners are working with in regards to what corporations believe is a new movement. And according to the source that's being driven in large part due to movies like Top Gun Maverick having phenomenal returns that broke through the ceiling of what analysts believed was possible. So this is what they're looking to do for films and toys. It is going to be coming back. Check it out. Number one, it should be patriotic. Number two, military and law enforcement positively portrayed. Number three, mostly if not all heterosexual. Um, number four, no spotlight on alphabet issues. Five, marriage and family units seen as positive institution. Kids love and admire their parents. Parents sacrificing for each other and their kids. How it is in the real world. Commute number six, communities seen as unifying, institutions shown as positive. Number seven, multiple white males in cast can be majority in leadership roles. Eight, feminine good-looking women, masculine men. Nine, hero archetype is intact. Most important thing to me. Ten, firearms not seen as inherently bad can be shown as a means of protection. This will mean... There will be toys and there will be films, more of them coming out this way. The toy companies need the toys because this is the kind of stuff that sells. And the film companies, you know, they're into making money. These two films, all right, Spider-Man's out from Sony. It's, it's not a Marvel film. Marvel's not the studio. Marvel's a partner on it. But they're not the studio completely controlling the content. Uh, and Sony is independent. Maverick is coming out through Paramount. Uh, it's independent. It's not part of some big collection of ideology. It's not to say that Sony and Paramount will never do woke stuff. They might, uh, but they're not going to take brands and completely destroy them. They're too precious to them over there because they don't have brands to destroy and they're not part of that uh, whole agenda. Now, also kind of interesting, coming from bounding into comics, um, Amazon confirms a new review system preventing users from leaving feedback on the Rings of Power, their new series, until 72 hours after its premiere. Claims a waiting period is introduced to stop review bombing from trolls. Amazon couldn't take it. They were getting too many negative reviews. So in the latest move by Hollywood and corporate America at large, for that matter, to silence dissent against their narrative acceptable products, under the loose guise of fighting internet trolls, Amazon has unveiled a new initiative to delay user reviews for any given piece of content added to their Prime Video service. Well, that's great, then they can't get any negative reviews, right? Its existence confirmed to by Variety by Amazon representative on September 2nd after users of all opinions towards the series noticed their criticisms were not being automatically listed under the Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. The company's new system now requires 72 hours to pass after a film of a series premieres before users can leave it feedback. According to the One Trade News outlet, if a review is left within this three-day debut window, each critique is then evaluated to determine whether it's genuine or a forg forgery created by a bot, troll, or other breed of digital goblin. So they'll decide what reviews they will and won't post. Further, the representative revealed that thought it was discovered just recently thanks to the premiere of the multi-million dollar bastardization of J.R.R. Tolkien's seminal fantasy works. The system has actually been in place since August 12th, with its first test subject being the streaming platform series reboot of A League of Their Own. I guess not enough people cared about that to even notice. Notably, in support of Amazon's performative fears, 
Variety pointed to the stark contrast between the series' current 84% critical and 34% audience rating on Rotten Tomatoes as evidence that Rings of Power would see, in fact, had already been the victim of review bombing. Just because critics like it doesn't mean the audience likes it. The critics go in looking for something else. However, this disingenuous framing of the audience scores ignores the fact that while many of the series' negative reviews were left by those who understandably rejected the Rings of Power solely for its wanton butchering of Tolkien's vision, a vast majority of them came from fans who, as evidenced by the direct critiques of the episodes themselves, gave its premiere a chance and still found themselves disappointed. So I'm going to have a link to this article as well. You can check out these reviews for yourself. Um, did you think it would ever get to the point where they wouldn't even let you leave reviews uh, <laughs> because they didn't like what they were seeing? I mean, I guess it's their content. Let me know what you think in the comments below about that. Is it their right to do that? I mean, they should have a warning at the top. Warning, we can't allow people to give reviews on this. So before you spend time on it, you might want to wait 72 hours to see what people are really think of it. Let me know what you think of that, though, in the comments below. All right, uh, I will see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.